hello everyone, this is Ron, and of course I'm back with you with another episode of Empire Coins and Collectibles. Uh, yes, I've been out for a period of time, had some work done on my knee, but everything is going good. It's as it should be. But enough of that. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to be talking about mail call. Yes, I, I've gotten behind on opening my mail. I've got a few uh, deliveries by eBay that I need to open up and check to see what I received. Now, I did order coins, uh, perhaps some double dies, uh, perhaps some die cracks, but I probably will be as surprised as you are as we open the mail. And what we'll do is we'll look at the coin on the desk camera and then we'll put it under the coin microscope. And for those of you that don't have a coin microscope, I would say that you need to get a time log. A time log has the ability to uh, show you as a camera what it is looking at under its lens system, the micro microscope system, and it is able to take pictures and you can upload them and use them on eBay or on your website where you're showing your, your collection or so forth. It is a very useful tool. When I bought this coin microscope, I think it was about $250, $260, I don't recall, but perhaps Miss Empire does recall because she's know all, see all. She is the puppet master, and maybe you can use that. Um, I also have been using this mic, and it came from Amazon, and you get two mics that run off an attachment. It's a USB attachment. It's kind of plug and play. It's over here on the computer. You plug it in, and then you turn the mics on, and you have a different type of mic rather than your computer mic. The good thing about that is this mic will stay with you wherever you go, whichever way you look and so forth. Whereas a desktop mic, like the Yeti mic I have used in the past, if you turn away and talk as you're looking at the microscope, the audio is not so good. But perhaps one day I'll show you the complete setup that I use. Perhaps that's gonna be beneficial to you. All right, enough of all that chatter. Let's go to the desktop camera. All right, here we go. Oh, I did forget while we're switching cameras, please remember when we reach that 1,000 subscriber mark, we're going to give away a AU58 Buffalo nickel that looks like to me it's mint state. It's got this luster on it that's just absolutely beautiful. It's been slabbed by Anex, a very class type organization, quick deliveries, friendly service. I can't say enough about them. And by the way, I don't own stock. I don't own the company. I have no affiliation with the company whatsoever. I just enjoy using Anax. Okay. So we have this uh, letter and it's kind of a, a gray print here. You can't really tell when it came in. I've got the pertinent information covered up. We have this letter, which came in the 3rd of June. So you can tell, at least by this, I'm way behind in my uh, letter opening. This came in June the 2nd. So certainly this let on this one came in May 30th. So yes, I'm a little over a month behind in opening my mail. So let's go ahead and open this up. Now, again, I will say, I don't recall what these are. These most likely are coins. I did order a few cards. I don't think they are sports cards, but let's just go ahead and see. Nothing else in there, so we'll throw that out. Feels a kind of heavy, like it's a coin or something. And I'm probably going to cut this open and then look at the paperwork and then show it to you if it doesn't have any pertinent information. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'm just slicing it open, getting the plastic wrapper off. Yep, looks like it's a coin. We'll open this up right here. Now, I got to tell you, I am not aggravated at this packaging. The reason why is because this coin was well covered. It's well protected, okay? And it looks to be like a 1923 Coleman. It says it's a DDR. And you guys know by now, 
my affinity to DDRs, right? And I believe this is around maybe the lips and the nose. We're going to take it look at, uh, at it under the coin microscope. So let me get rid of this so we can pull the coin out. And if I have to, I will open up the coin sleeve, but we'll see if we can't get it to focus while it's in the coin sleeve. We've got a lot of wrapping going on here. All right. It's a beautiful looking coin, isn't it? Let me turn this light on. My overhead light, get a little more light on the subject. Does that help? A little bit. Yeah, got some fuzz on it. Nice, clean looking coin. All right, we're going to switch cameras and go to the coin microscope. We'll have to bring this into focus. And I think I'm going to have to turn off some of the lights here because it kind of glares with that plastic. Does it on the coin? Oh, yeah. Look at the lips and the nose. That's quite phenomenal. You know what? I think I will open this up so we can look at it directly. So now we're going to put it back under there. We may have to refocus it. Let's go down a little lower. Now, to be honest with you, I haven't gone on to the websites that catalog and annotate the known DDRs. So, you know, in my state of ignorance, I see the doubling. And I would say that that is a DDR. That would be me based on the doubling on the nose and on the lips. Let me rotate it a bit. Yeah, you can get a better view of it right there. But I've been humbled by the good folks over at Anax. I had a coin that I could have sworn, I think it was a 1994 quarter, that was a DDR. It showed doubling of letters and everything. And I just knew it was a double die coin. But when it came back, the annotation in the paperwork said it was most likely machine doubling or a worn die. So the die had gone through excessive use and uh, had some damage on it, made it look like it. To me, I still think that that was a DDR. And at some point, I probably will send pictures over to one of the uh, error clubs and perhaps uh, try to go forward with that and see if it, it has been documented in other areas or other states. And if it has, then I'll resubmit perhaps to NGC or PCGS. But just looking at this, this does look like it's doubling. Now, I'm going to get the toothpick. If you can't see it, I'll point it out right here right there on the lips and on the nose. You see that doubled outline right there. So let me rotate it around. That's one thing you can do is if you think you have a double die or some type of doubling, if you rotate the coin and look at it from different perspectives, and if the view of that doubling persists, then perhaps you do have a some type of doubling. But if it doesn't, it could be just due to shadows. There's a lot of coins for sale on eBay for this particular type of coin. I'm going to bring it down a little lower and see if we can't get a little more diagnostic here. Yeah, you can see that doubling right around the edge of the coin. But, you know, I think in this particular case, looking at it from this perspective, we're still kind of out of being definitive about it. Now, there's something going on. I don't know if this is damage at the mint, but there's something going on right here. Looks like die chips and everything, and then right there. So it makes me wonder if the die was damaged or if there was some grease on there, which kind of got in the way of minting a proper coin. But you can see that doubling right here on the tip of the nose and on the lips. What do you guys think? Is this a double die? You be the judge. Now I'm going to reverse this out, bring it back into focus. 
will kind of tour around the rest of the coin. That's a good picture right there. It's a very good picture of the doubling. Okay. So I'm hopeful that when I send it in, I'll get a DDR. But look at those open fields. Isn't that beautiful? Very nice. The, again, I don't know if that scuffing is like grease hairs on the lips or what. The engraver's initials, Bessie Coleman, 615-1921. A lot of interesting people in our history of flight. How about that? Just a gorgeous coin. It shows really well in person. All right, let's flip it over and look at the obverse, which is a picture of George Washington. Looking at the Liberty lettering, you see some scratches on the forehead. The field still looks pretty good. There's a little bit of scuffing just above 1923. Okay. I think we're done with this coin. It's a beautiful coin. I'm going to be very happy with it. I'll re put it into a new coin flip and set it aside for a future uh, submission to Annex. So let's look at this one. May have to look at the paperwork first so that uh, critical information is not shown. Always security first. I'll just show it this way. So here's the coins. More Bessie Coleman coins. All right, I'm going to pull these off, but I'm going to kind of, kind of take a peek at the uh, letter here. STC cards on eBay. And it says, enjoy your free coin. Please remember to leave feedback. And I always do. I always leave feedback. So he gave me a free coin. Oh, it says it's a brilliant uncirculated NCUST DDR. Double nose and double lips. So we'll see if we got another example of the double nose and double lips. So I'm pulling. And notice what, what he did here. He had it wrapped up, put it in, in an envelope, and these plastic coin flips are just perfect to put the coins in. And he sealed this right here to keep the coins from sliding out. There have been examples of coins and even sports cards sliding out of their holders and being damaged in the shipment. So when you package to ship something out, you want to make sure that you're protecting your good name and the happiness of your buyer by making sure that the, the product is properly secured. Now, uh, I tell you what, I'm gonna slice this in two because I'm not gonna use this anymore. And we're gonna drop it right out here. We're gonna do the same thing with this one. So I wonder if he sent me two of those coins or if he sent me uh, one that's a DDR and then one that's not. Will it focus? There it is. So I can't really tell which one this is. We'll see if this is the doubled die reverse. Again, this would be my second example. So I'm going to flip over to the coin microscope and notice I'm holding it by the edges. If you handle any coins, handle them by the edges if you don't have gloves. Even if you do have gloves on, handle them by the edges. I believe this is another one of the doubled lips. Very good. And those fields are just gorgeous. And look, the lips here are clear versus the other one. So I wonder if that other one is grease error. Isn't this a gorgeous example of that? There is some, uh, some uh, something on the hand. Don't know what would have caused that. I'm wondering, is there anything on the tail of the airplane? Sometimes the way the carving is done on the edges of the images, the shadows will make you think that it's doubled, but I don't think it's doubled. Just an interesting coin. We'll get around the rest of this and just take a real close look. What the date? 
there's something going on right here. Overall, just a beautiful coin. Very happy with it. And then, of course, you can really see that doubling right there. Does everybody see what I'm pointing at right here? Look at that. So undoubtedly, there's doubling. Whether or not it's a double die, that's going to be the powers that be that make that decision. I am not smart enough to uh, make that determination as evidenced in my last unboxing from Anax. Okay. Let's go back and look at the other side of it. Again, it's just a gorgeous coin. Have I said in the past episodes that I'm jealous of those individuals living over in the Philadelphia Mint area? That means the area in which the Philadelphia Mint distributes coins in. It seems like whether by purpose or lack of quality control, there's a lot coming out of the Philadelphia Mint that collectors love. The Denver Mint seems to have a tighter control on quality. I'm wondering what that is right there. Is that ex an example of the chip, die chip that we've seen previously on Washington's lips? Looks like it. No, now when I turn the light, it's always good to turn the light. It looks like it's just part of the carving. Maybe they polished it out and that's a remnant of it. What do you guys think? Kind of looks like that. Maybe they polish the, the die to get rid of that die chip. Again, just a gorgeous coin. Okay, what we're going to do is now is go to the last coin. That makes two of the double die reverses. Let's see. I think this must be the extra coin that they gave me. Let's look. And look at that. There's doubling on that coin. This seller, I paid $7 total for this quarter. Yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? A newly minted quarter you paid $7 for. What's that, 28 quarters for one quarter? Uh, that's not too smart, but this has some type of distinguishing feature that could be a doubled die. Uh, if not a double die, it's something and that makes it worth a little more than face value. But I do love these. And they're going to go into my collection once I get them certified. And of course, there's people out there like Blue Ridge Silver Hound that will tell you if they're low cost coins, don't spend the money to get them certified. You'll never get your money back which mostly is a true statement. However, as a collector, I want to protect my collection and I don't mind spending the 15 to $20 that NX charges me depending on the number of coins I submit at one time. I don't mind spending that money to really protect the condition of the coins in my collection. So yeah, that looks like a doubled die to me. We'll look at the reverse again. See if we can see that feature on the lip of Washington. Okay. You know what? I'm going to get all three coins and we're going to compare them. All three coins. So this is the last one. This one here coming up is the second one. So we're seeing some of the same features. It may just be and the sculpting of the coin there. And then this is the first one we looked at. So I don't know. Do you, do you think this has been like a die chip or something that's been polished? Or is it just part of the sculpting of the image of Washington's mouth? All right, my friends, I'm going to turn the overhead light out and we're going to go back to the desktop camera. I've got two more. Uh, envelopes to open, but I think I'm going to wrap it up and reserve those for another episode. So, yeah, that's the joy of coin collecting, isn't it? You order the coins, you can't wait to get them in, you accumulate a few, you do your letter opening or unboxing, and it's like treasure hunting that you get to do. Again, 
and you get to add them to your coin collection. Now, of course, I will get them certified and keep the best and try to recoup some of my money uh, and probably sell some of the others, just like I'm doing with the Buffalo Nickels. Of course, Miss Empire is putting them on our Empire Coins and Collectibles eBay store. So if you're interested, uh, just keep a lookout on there. She'll be putting some of those Buffalo Nickels on that we've had certified, and maybe uh, you'll find one that you like. All right, my friends, you guys take care, and I hope you have a great week. All the best. Thank you.